Today in the hot seat, we have Lynn Goldsmith. She has a book, Music in the 80s. I'll put links down below. And we're also going to talk about Grand Funk. You're not going to want to miss this one, kids. Don't touch that dial. It all starts now. You know, I was a whole lot more than a publicist, but I don't think Donnie could have handled that. When it came to the second album, um, I said, okay, I'm going to do a 3D album cover. You know, these are my ideas. Uh, and I said, and we should throw a song in there. I'll talk to Todd about it because Mark always sang amazing. Mark's an yeah. incredible to this day. To this Mark day. Lynn, incredible. Boy. No. Mark Farner from Grand Funk Railroad. He's the brains behind the whole outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. People do not know. In, I recorded an album under the name Will Powers. And Mark uh, sang the song Smile. I always say to people, guess who that is? No one can, Mark, you know, all these people at the time, Rogers, uh, uh, Freddie Mercury, you know, they get touted as these uh, amazing rock singers. Mark is unbelievable. He, and he's still, at his age, most people don't have it. There are very few. Cindy Lauper, who takes care of her voice. Pat Benatar, who takes care of her voice. But most of those others have... Mark still can hit certain notes that are... Up. It was amazing that he ever could hit them. So, so Mark was always... And Mark was always really, actually, much hipper than people thought. When he cut off his hair, I have Mark in like really cool outfits and stuff. Donnie was not cool, sorry, okay? But Donnie thought he was like the boss, okay? So uh, I said to Todd, listen, Mark always walks around singing these old rock and roll songs or whatever. That's perfect for, you know, the party band, right? And lo and behold, Locomotion. Locomotion. Right. Now comes time for the third album. Right. And they have these hits under their belt. And I made them light up on stage. So the stage shows are selling because it's a show. You know, it's not just a band coming out in their jeans. Right. It's a real show. And they've got hits now. So I say, okay, Andy, third album, this is what we're doing. We're going to record it in Fats Domino's kitchen, okay? And wow. I'm going to make a film of this, right? The press is going to love it. Greg Mark will just sing his tushy off, okay? This will be, like, amazing, you know, a first. And I was so excited about it, and I talked to Fats, and we were going to go to New Orleans. And if you've ever seen that house, you know, I was so excited about the film I would make, the whole deal. And uh, uh, Donnie now feeling his oats, you know, um, as if he made Grand Funk what they are, which what made Grand Funk what they are, as far as I'm concerned, from American Band on, okay, was Mark Farner. And me, <laughs> that's what I think. Um, but also I have to admit this, there is a chemistry between people that you can't explain. You can't add a person to it. You can't take a person away from it. So I have to say it was me, Mark, and the chemistry of Mel, Mark, Donnie, okay? There is something and a trio is as powerful as you can get. You know, when you think of the Hendrix trio, you can really move audiences. By the way, part of moving audiences, I studied about what motivates people, plants, whatever, to grow, to change. And if you play the bass at a certain <laughs> decibel level, it will bring people to their feet. And that was also one of the things I did with Grand Funk whether Mel knew it or not, okay? So there were a range of things, and I loved all of this, right? 
But then Donnie wanted this guy who had produced the raspberries, okay, uh, and had a hit to mm -hmm. produce this record. It's like, hey, you know, if you guys are really great songwriters, that's one thing. You know, Mark has written some great songs. And I have to say this, Mark is such a generous, he's like me, you know, I just want to like make the thing, right? I didn't need my name blasted on it. When American Band, I did the whole package. In fact, the vinyl yellow record, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I was hell bent that it had to be a gold vinyl record. And it was my, I did the logo with the finger. Okay. And it lit up under a black light. I mean, I go to all the Very different. cool. Well, I want fans to have it. But the vinyl yellow record, uh, Capitol said there was no, you have to do that with virgin vinyl. And Capitol Records said there was no pressing plant in the world that had a, a virgin vinyl available to uh, press. So you think I believe them? I got on the phone and called every pressing plant in Germany, wherever there was a pressing plant. And the pressing plant that I found, which was in America, which had virgin vinyl, was owned by Capitol Records. Okay. So I like, so I hand them the package. And Andy would say, listen, uh, whatever his name was, Bob. I'm, whatever his name was, the art director, who never saw the package. I just, I handed it, finished, right? And he would say, he really wants his name on it. Do you mind not getting credit for this? But I don't. I don't mind not being credit. I just want to make what I want to make, but don't mess with me. So when Donnie started getting in there and this is what I'm going to wear on stage. And this is who I think should produce it. And Andy, for some reason, was like, I don't know, intimidated by Donnie? I don't know what it was. But I got news for you. When Mark gave Donnie publishing of We're an American Band, when I was there, Mark wrote that song, three quarters of that song, as far as I'm concerned. Um. Uh, I, you know, it just kills me um, that that guy um, takes the, the love of Grand Funk fans and tries to put it out there um, without Mark. Mark is Grand Funk. Um, so it, it really riles me because for me, that whole thing was, uh, I didn't have children and that was like having a baby, you know, you plan it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, 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 like it's doing really well in kindergarten and first grade, you know, and then it's like, boom. So from that point on, and I have to say where I'm yeah. very bad and vindictive, um, from that point on. I didn't care so much, you know, and I knew I was on my way out. Uh, and uh, when I was finally done, I said, hey, Andy, why don't you tell them I have this idea a born to die? <laughs> and I put them in coffins that and, then, and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, you are rock and roll. I'm so, that's a great one. That's a great one. Yeah, a, I was done. Real... <laughs> yeah, I was done because I was also sick of they. Uh, you know, Donnie for sure, and Mel was always he didn't count. He, I mean, he counted, uh, but he he wasn't someone who ex he was fine with whatever every, anybody wanted to do. Um, but, uh, you know, I really felt like, Andy, you're not standing up and telling Donnie, you know, what it is I actually do, you know? Uh, I knew Mark could handle it. Mark was actually, Mark was never really uh, machismo, like, uh, you know, like Donnie. If I said to Mark, Mark, I really think you should wear these pants and why and blah, blah, blah. He listened to me, you know, and we discuss it. And, uh, you know, to this day, 
um, I feel really happy that I could be part of, um, you know, his success story. And I wish I could be as um, loving and forgiving of, um, especially since, you know, I don't really have the same investment in Grand Funk that Mark does and in, in being a childhood friend. It just makes me sad because there's a band together, those guys, the chemistry, you can never take it away yeah, from Yeah, and they're still they alive. Are. They're still alive. <laughs> they're still alive. Yeah, they could be taking advantage of. But Donnie goes out on the road as Grand Funk and tries to replace Mark and Mel. And it's like, you're not no. Grand Funk. Mark I could actually go out as Grand Funk. However, uh, Donnie sues him for even coming near the name. Yeah. So, you know, he can't even go out as Mark Farner, formerly of Grand Funk. I mean, Donnie is just really a despicable human being. When I do these interviews, I have to, I edit the beginning and I kept messing up my beginning. I go, and coming in the studio, Mark Farner of Grand Funk, I can't say it any other way because to me, well, he's that's Grand his Funk. claim to fame. Yeah, he's Grand Funk. And you know what? They should be in the Rock rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is crazy. You know, it's a whole nother story. They will be. The people will run out of people. The, they'll, run out of, they'll run out of people. Right to um, Donnie. If Donnie would let me run everything, Grand Funk could get back together and they could do really well. <laughs> but he would have to, like, do everything I say. <laughs> I would like to see a response to that. You know, I do know that, you know, bottom line, uh, people like myself or Mark or, you know, that we're we're fine. It just would have been nice for fans. And it's a nice chunk of change for people like Mel, who I'm sure at a certain age, you know, it's it's a nice thing. Um, And yeah. So it's a win-win for everybody. You know what? It could be it could be a gig where nobody even has to deal with each other. Clay up there, you <laughs> no, know, go I on stage. That. I did that with Emerson Lake and Palmer where they went in all separate cars and stuff. Did you really? Did, oh yeah. Did they they didn't talk to each other. Yeah. That was Lynn Goldsmith. And if you want to see more of this episode, unedited, uncut, make sure you check it out. All access VIP backstage pass in Patreon. Find a lot of great episodes there. Make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and please put your comments down below. We always like to hear from you. Until then, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. Who loves you, baby? We do. 